from algorithm to pseudocode to code and trace tables. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step list of instructions. So to bake a cake, we can express it as step-by-step -step typed up instruction or as a flow chart. Mix ingredients, pour into pan, put it into the oven, bake until ready, if ready remove, let cool serve and eat. The great thing about a flow chart is that it can actually show some decision elements. For example, uh, we don't know if it's ready, we test with a fork and if you've baked before, if the fork is too moist, you pop it back in. So it's good enough. But then an algorithm gets refined. So algorithm refinement, you start to put the category of the step and then the refined steps underneath that. So mix ingredients actually includes mix up wet ingredients and uh, 1.2 is add wet ingredients to the dry. That in turn could have its own refinement but I think you get the other, you get the idea. Uh, even baking, you've got the minutes described here but you've got check if risen so that in itself is a refinement. Then you've got remove, what does that mean? Then you've got serve and eat which is actually two separate points and could be refined further. And that's essentially what you need to know about algorithms. Where it becomes interesting, far more interesting, is where the algorithm gets turned into pseudocode. So what is pseudocode? Well, as soon as uh, we, that should be, work out the steps with no ambiguity, uh, that should be then, then we can say it has been written in pseudocode. So as soon as we've got steps that have no ambiguity, then we can say it is pseudocode. But pseudocode has a certain format or a set of rules so how do we structure pseudocode? Well, that's the rule. We look at our inputs, we look at how we process those inputs, and then we see what sort of output or printout we need. Okay, and that's the basic rule. If you remember that, you'll understand um, how to structure something like our first problem. Simple problem number one, determine the sum, average, and product of three numbers. We can solve this by writing out the steps or a flow chart. And then we can convert these steps to code using vb.net. But first of all, pseudocode. So start, read, is that input, process, or output? Uh, S, which is our sum, equals x plus y plus z, and so on. And write, is that input, process, or output? And then stop. The start and the stop are essential in a flowchart not always essential when we simply write it out as our pseudocode. So this is pseudocode. Read, that's definitely input, x, y, and z. Compute, well compute is the same as process. Um, the sum, there's the sum, there's the average, and there's the product. And write, well that's our output. So going back to that, that's input, process, output, and we can see those steps clearly in our flowchart and our pseudocode. Let's put that simple problem into structured uh, pseudocode as per what the exam board expects. And there it is there. So determine the sum, average, and product. I've set off two numbers just to uh, make it simpler. Uh, so this is how we do our pseudocode. We look at our input, we look at our process, and we look at our output. If you can remember that, you can structure anything into pseudocode. So what is our input? Well, our inputs are two numbers. What is our process? Well, we need to know what to do with those two numbers. Uh, so with some average and product, there's a process, and we need to work that out. This is actually a process within a process, if you like, but they're still using the same uh, assigned inputs, the same numbers. And this is our output. We're going to print out the result of the process. Carrying on with simple problem number one, I've actually put this now into pseudocode. So let's see if that will open up for me. Uh, it's got an error, but uh, it should force itself open. Let's have a look. Ah, good. You can see I've pasted the pseudocode straight into my VB. And I've tried to mimic it as closely as possible. So let's just zoom in there. There we go. So there are my inputs, numbers 1 and 2. I've obviously had to declare them as a particular data type. Um, and we know that integer rounds... Uh, let me see, rounds, ten, rounds down, uh, I believe. Um, but never mind, we've, we've got a result of 10, so the average is going to be easily, easily worked out. 
So number one, number two, I've now assigned numbers to them. I've got my process. And then I've got my output, which is simply sum, average, and product. Sum, average, and product. Let's run that and bring that into the picture. There we go. 10 is the sum, 5 is the average, 16 is the product. Am I right? 2 times 8? Yes, I am right. Thank goodness for that. Right, um, back to the presentation. Um, just wanted to show you how close pseudocode is, especially to VB. You'll find it uh, not so close to C or C sharp, but certainly close to, to VB. Um, let's move on to our simple problem number two. Calculate the cube of the number x. So, there's x, but we've got to have a y as well. Our y is interesting because cube is 3, so our y is purely to do something three times, to cube it. Okay, so we've got our input section there, we've got our process there, and part of the process is a repeat of a process. So there we go. Um, so, sorry, that is our input, yep. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Simple problem number two. Calculate the cube of the number x. Well, whatever we enter for x, we know that cube means uh, three. All right, so we've got to do something uh, three times. We've got to do a multiplication on x three times. Now, we're going to have a third input here called result. And we're going to have something which is definitely going to come up exam after exam, and that's a uh, iterative problem. In other words, a repeat. And this is iteration. Uh, immediately you should say, hold on, we could do this recursively. Yes, of course you could. And I've done that too. But let's just look at the repeat in, an, in uh, pseudocode. So there's our input. We input x and y. We assign values to our inputs. Okay. Uh, we've actually got three uh, variables here, x, which is the actual number we're going to cube, y, you'll see what, why we need y in a moment, and result, well result is our output, and it's going to be the result of x and y. Then this is our process, our process is a loop, and we've got a repeat until y equals naught. If you had to say repeat and then until immediately underneath that, um, it won't suit this cube because we need to work through what y is doing before we meet this condition. This is called the condition to get us out of the loop, the, the get out of jail card, the until. And then of course we've got our output. We're just going to output the result. At the moment, remember the result has value 1, x has value 4, and those are actually set in stone. Okay, until we work through the loop. X won't change at all. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. And I think the best thing to do is to actually, I wonder if I've got this. Uh, yep, I'm going to call up this code. I've got it in one of my conaps. And we're going to look at it iteratively and see what it does. And here it is. Once again, I just simply pasted the, the pseudocode straight into VB so that I could literally copy it. Once again, VB follows this so closely. We have to deal with our inputs first. We then have to deal with the process of the method and then our output. Let's start with output. We're going to output a console right now as result. Uh, we're going to put our 4 in. Our 4 is x. That's set in stone. Nothing much happens to that, but a lot happens with y and result. What is y? y just says every time we loop, could we go down by 1? Okay? Every time we loop, could we go down by 1? What is result? Every time we loop, could we get whatever the result is and multiply it by x? What's our first result? Our first result is 1. And you can see we've actually assigned that in our pseudocode to 1. Let's run that. The great thing about console is right line. Let's just see if we can get that running. Yeah. Excellent. We've got it looping. Uh, three times. So 3 minus 1 is 2, and uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, and then when it equals 0, we bail out of the loop. 
Uh, it won't actually make a difference if I say do while. Uh, I can show you that at another stage. The point is, or do while, sorry, is greater than zero. It, it won't make a difference. The point is, it bails out after three times, and we've got cube four. We've got the result of cube four. I've put my console write line and reload within the loop so you can actually see the three things it does, the, uh, the three stages. Why do we kick off with four? Because our first result is one. We've set that in stone. But then we start changing the result by saying, please multiply it by the number that's just passed through the iteration. So it's four times four is 16, and four times 16 is 64. 4, 6 is 24, carry 2, 4, and 4, 5, 6, correct. Just double checking. Now we're going to take our result of the cube into a trace table. This is a trace table, and you definitely need to know this for the exam. What you do is you, you're given a, um, a pseudocode, and you have to dry run it. It's called dry running, it's called dry testing, and it's called trace table. All of those names. Remember, we start off with our variables and giving them the values they are assigned. So we are assigning 4 to x, 3 to y, and 1 to result. What happens next? Well, we keep repeating that process, and the result is x, that's the second stage now, b represents the second stage of our trace table. So what's happened here? is we've passed the result uh, we've passed the result over there it is that's our, our first loop our first loop has is, has been four times one there we go well one the result times x four and that's our results so that's our first loop there that's not our first loop that's what we've been assigned let's move on can you guess before we move on okay so four times 4 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. Result times x is 16. And now 16 times 4 is 64. What's been happening all the way through? We've been subtracting 1 from y. So y started off as 3, then 2, then 1, then 0. That's our last loop. 0. And we're out of there. Okay, so that's straight from textbook. Roughly page 25 or 6, I think, thereabouts. So that's an important thing uh, because that will be in your exam. A trace table, you might have to create the pseudocode, then dry run it or uh, trace table it. Or you might be given the pseudocode and then have to draw up a trace table. Okay, pseudocode, just to let you know, sometimes is written with a start and a stop. So you declare all your inputs, your variables, you have a start and then a stop. Okay, just to warn you, um, in case you say, what does that start about? Well, it start is, I guess, the process, and then something's outputted, and it's stopped. The stop can also be after the process. Um, but in our case, we let it print out, or console write line, each step, so our stop came after. Simple problem number three. It says, hand trace the following problem. This is question 11 from your textbook. And this is the pseudocode. That's the pseudocode there. So result is assigned 0. So we know to draw up our trace table, and they've given it to us as a 0. We don't know what n is until we are given a value. And there are values, 2, 6, 34, 12, and 0. So we start off as 2. So it's result plus n. So what do you think the first result is going to be? Result, 0 plus n, 2. So I hope you said 2, and let's go and find out exactly what that's about. So entering 2 creates 2, entering 6 creates 8, because it's 2 plus the 6, now it's 8 plus the 34, the result is 42, now it's 42 plus the 12, the result is 54, until n equals naught. Well, they've also given us a naught to input, I haven't shown it to you there. But I should have shown you that naught was our last input. And we obviously have to continue. All right? We have to continue the loop. So it's going to be 54 plus naught equals 54. But n is now naught, so we exit the loop. Right, I must correct that. 
Uh, simple problem number four, question 12 and question 13. Question 12, we've been set a following pro uh, a problem. Please pause so that you can read the problem and then come up with your own solution before we continue. Right, this is the answer to question 12. The structured English is input BC, calculate the square root of B squared plus C squared, output the result. This is the pseudocode. Input BC, A, we assign the square root of B times B plus C times C to A, and we output A. Pretty simple. Uh, could you pause for um, this question, draw a program flowchart for the algorithm in question 11, for that one. So let's have a look. Uh, pause and let's come up with the answer. Okay, no, not a train smash there. This is simply a flow chart. Might you be asked to do a flow chart in the exam? You might be asked to fill or finish one off. Yes, and this is what they like to do: is leave the decisions empty. Remember, if n equals naught, we can just output the result. But if n is not equal to naught, we keep looping. Okay, get n, result is result plus n. Uh, what's our get out of jail card for that? Uh, it was when n equals naught. Do you remember that one? And that is uh, algorithm to pseudocode to code. I've got loads of other presentations to do with algorithms, and they're all valuable, but I would say that this one is the one you need to know thoroughly. If you understand this one, you'll understand how to get through exam questions. Um, this is the basis, this is from the textbook, and this will help you to understand pseudocode. But please do go through the other presentations as well.